I love making models. Let's make a model of a water molecule. How do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. You need several things. A couple of atoms of hydrogen, represented by these yellow blobs of plasticine, and an atom of oxygen, represented by the red blob of plasticine. Put the two yellow blobs on the red blob, and you have, believe it or not, something that looks like Mickey Mouse, but it's a model of a water molecule, H2O. Now, there are many other liquids and here's another one represented by two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen, H2O2, and that is hydrogen peroxide, which is an antiseptic or a bleach, and it looks like water, but it isn't. It's made of the same elements as water, though, hydrogen and oxygen, but there are two oxygen atoms in the middle, H2O2. That's a molecule of hydrogen peroxide, and here's another one. Now, it's possible to make hydrogen peroxide turn into water by adding various chemicals, <clears throat> and when that happens, you get a spare oxygen atom left over. Let's see it happen to this water molecule as well. We now have two molecules of uh, water and two spare oxygen atoms left over. If they join together, it forms the gas oxygen, or O2, and that's the gas that we breathe in when we're breathing in air. But let's come back to our hydrogen peroxide. I said you can turn it into water and oxygen by adding chemicals. One chemical you can add to make it do this is potassium permanganate or Condi's crystals. Now this is another disinfectant. It's also sometimes used to treat snake bites. But all we need is a small amount of that and we should produce some oxygen. And you'll notice it because it'll be bubbles of oxygen. Let's see if it happens. Small amount of potassium permanganate into the glass and there's something being produced, it's a gas. If I light a piece of wood, a wooden splint, it's an old broken ruler, I should be able to plunge it into the oxygen and let's see what happens. It glows more brightly. If I blow it out, it rekindles from glowing wood to burning wood. And that certainly is one of the things that oxygen can do. It can make things burn. Well, no, no problem in making wood burn, what about steel? Do you think it would be possible to make steel burn? Steel teaspoon. Let's hold it in the flame. It won't burn, of course it won't, it's steel. But it is possible to make steel burn if you have it finely divided enough. And if you look at the steel wool that you use in the kitchen to scrub pots and pans, that is certainly finely divided. There, there it is there. So we're going to see if we can turn that steel wool into something burning. So to do that, I'll get some more oxygen generated. And to do this, we need some more hydrogen peroxide in the glass, like so, and some more potassium permanganate. And then once it starts giving out oxygen, I'm going to set the steel wool on fire. We'll see it burning in air, first of all, and then we'll see it burning in oxygen. In goes the potassium permanganate. There's the oxygen. Get the steel wool burning, into the oxygen and it burns even more brightly. In fact, it looks like a sparkler. So that's one way of making oxygen with potassium permanganate and hydrogen peroxide. There are many other ways of making oxygen and in fact, while I've been talking, something's been making oxygen over here. It's that green plant because all green plants, trees, bushes, flowering plants, are all producing oxygen. They take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. We take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So you've got Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, carbon dioxide in, oxygen out, oxygen in. A beautiful balance. That's all chemistry.